Welcome to DXV Today, where tonight we're talking all film and television. We're going to be learning from the experts, but specifically, what have we got coming up on the show? Well, Mitha heads down to the Courtyard Playhouse for an adult acting workshop. We're going to be delving into the world of horror movies with Emirati filmmaker Hannah Kaldam. And we're going to be learning acting from the best as we have a conversation with Leo Wong, an acting coach right here in the studio. Plus, we've got a new age workout later on in the show. I'm really excited about all of this because, I mean, I think all three of us absolutely love television. We're right here on the TV right now. Yeah. On the It'd be nice Dubai to think one. that we can relate. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot more stuff in film that we definitely want to do and that's why Dina need to talk about something massive that you did in the world of film. Do you want to regale us with that story? Well I think a lot of talent in the UAE were very very excited in the media industry to uh, get a chance to work on Mission Impossible. I mean I think that's all anyone could talk about at the time but a lot of us who were here at Dubai One got a chance to work on set. I was a production assistant and it was very exciting and I did have a number of run-ins with Tom Cruise. Oh tell us one, tell us one, tell us there one. Was a, there was a few. Once I just suddenly found him leaning on me, which was a very Him big surprise. Him leading? Yeah, he was... Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just going to leave that gonna one. going to get there. me in trouble with there. Um, and another time, my role was to make sure that nobody tripped over a rope, and I was inside the Burj Khalifa, I think 127th floor. gave you floor. all the big jobs. And yeah, big jobs, very responsible. And all of a sudden, I heard um, a knock from outside of the Burj Khalifa and realized that Tom Cruise was just floating midair, hanging outside the Burj Khalifa waving to me. Amy, well, that was a highlight. Amy, have you ever had any run-ins with Tom Cruise? I have not, but I wouldn't mind one. Yeah. Any any cool celebrity run-ins in Dubai? Um, like a premiere or? No, I'm I, I just seem to go to all the wrong places, it seems. Really? But I mean, I do know that Dubai is an amazing destination for all of these incredible movies, especially we've got Bollywood, Nollywood, Hollywood. They all want to have a presence here in the city. What about you, Faris? Uh I've done a few Instagram videos. You what? I've done some Instagram videos. That's yes. the same as film, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely no? not. Come on, you've been to a cool premiere. We've I done have... red carpets. We've met a lot of Hollywood, Bollywood stars. I, I mean, I didn't do Nickelodeon like you did, which must have been fantastic. But I have been to a few uh, movie premieres. I think the best one I went to was uh, for the new Exorcist film. Well, we're going to ha have a lot to talk about with our next our next guest co-host, who uh, you guys might just recognize his last name. Uh, let's find out who it is. I'm Amar Bothi, a presenter, producer, and media consultant with the Dubai Film and TV Commission, and I'm excited to join in on the fun here at DXB today. Yes, Omar Bhatti, you might recognize that last name. Dina Bhatti, anything to do with you? <laughs> yes, Omar will join us right here in the hot seat. But before we get into that, Mehta went down to the Courtyard Playhouse, a family-run theater center to participate in their acting workshop for adults. So let's take a look. I'm here at the Courtyard Playhouse in El Goz where I'm about to find out how this small theater helps support the film and television industry here in the UAE. Let's go find out. Thank you so much for having us over and that amazing workshop that we just experienced. Um, can you tell us more about how did the courtyard start and how did it help contribute to the growth of the film industry and the arts here in the UAE? The owners at Kemsley Dickinson and Tiffany Schultz, they, they've been in Dubai for a very long time and they actually started doing a course called the Desert Monologues around 15 years ago here. So that was the first ever adults course in the region. Oh. So that we, no one was doing any acting courses for adults at that time. So there was there was a passion and there was a, there was a need for it, but nobody, no one was doing it. So they started doing it um, at a different venue and it was it was just a place they were renting just like an empty cold studio and they felt that it didn't feel genuine it didn't feel warm and that Dubai was longing for something that was warm genuine that felt like a theater because if you're doing workshops for acting you want to feel like you're in the right space for it and that's where the idea came from of building a venue that's dedicated to workshops for kids teens and adults that's an actual theater 
And I, I know that that's not the only thing you teach here in the courtyard. You also have the actor's toolbox. So what is the actor's toolbox and what techniques do you utilize there? So in the actor's toolbox, that is um, if you're someone in Dubai who's interested in giving acting a shot, you're not so sure yet if it's for you, but you know, you're interested in maybe auditioning for some plays, doing some productions but you don't have the skill set yet you don't know how to you know project your voice you don't know how to do characters it's like your first step to joining the acting world and we at the end we do a showcase you know in front of a family and friends audience where you get a chance to perform and give it a try and see what is it like to act and lastly just want to ask is there anything that um, is set to kind of be introduced in the courthouse in the future that we might have a sneak peek of um, one thing that we are really like working on developing at the moment is our Arabic workshops. We really want to we really want to be able to cater to more people who would be more comfortable doing our, a workshop, whether it's acting or improvisation in Arabic. So that's one thing that we are is in the works and we're really trying to develop that a lot more. All right. Thank you so much, Marie, for having us here and can't wait to go back into the workshop. Well, that was a very fun experience. So if you haven't tried one of the workshops here at the Courtyard Playhouse, come and give it a go. You never know, maybe one day you'll become a famous actor. Our co-host for today is a presenter, producer, and an executive director, and husband to one of the <laughs> DXB Today members. <laughs> working Taking a switch on. <laughs> we'll figure it out in a bit. Uh, working with the Dubai Film and TV Commission, he has worked on everything you can imagine, from reality TV to even feature films. Please welcome Omar Bati to the studio. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. And of course, my most important credential is that I am Dina's husband. Yes. Is That's why I'm husband, here today. Dina? <laughs> He's an excellent husband, I will say, but an even better filmmaker. All right. Oh, wow. No further oh. questions. Thanks for coming in. No, I will ask you a question. So tell us a little bit about your career so far, working specifically in this region. I've had a very eclectic career. Um, so I know Dina, and we met initially actually here at the TV station. Uh, so I have worked on television programs, uh, both in front of and behind the camera. Uh, things from, yeah, as mentioned, reality shows, uh, documentaries. Um, uh, some narrative stuff. I've also written scripts, narrative scripts. I have worked on Mission Impossible as well as Dina, uh, and I worked on a number of uh, long-form documentary uh, programs. Basically, I produced most things, and I think that's really great. That's something really special about the industry here. It's really young uh, still, even though we think of Dubai now as a very established, or the UAE is a very established place. But the industry, when it comes to media, is very uh, up and coming. And that sort of gives you the opportunity to try a bit of everything in a way you probably wouldn't in other places, which is where it's much more regimented. Um, you know, you come in and you are on this track. Here, just by, uh, I guess, you're forced to try something, you know, uh, new, or you're forced to try some uh, new challenge every single time. I mean, I think a lot of people talk about Mission Impossible, which I've referenced now, and so have you. But what other productions right now are taking place in the UAE that we don't hear about as often? Is it very popular for, you know, in the Asian market, for Bollywood? What, what, what do we not know? I don't know about what we don't know, but I can say certainly Bollywood is a, a big, um, certainly one of our biggest international um, sort of players here in, in, in Dubai. Um, a lot of stars, like Shah Rukh Khan, for example, uh, really love Dubai, love coming back here over and over again. Uh, they just have a really great experience. Um, and so you, we see consistent production from Bollywood. And what we see in Dubai in, in general is if people have come to Dubai, if they've produced here, uh, they have a good experience, everything's smooth. Yes, we know, we all, I think we all agree the city's you know, a pretty great place to be. Um, great locations, they tend to come back again. Where we struggle a bit is getting people sort of in the door, particularly from the West. So we don't have as many productions, big international productions. We've seen more of that in Abu Dhabi. Uh, they have a rebate, which certainly helps attract that. But um, yes, it tends to be currently, I say, more to India. We had a few Chinese productions, which is cool. And increasingly, we're having a lot of reality. So I think everyone here probably has seen Dubai Bling at some point. Oh, yes. You know, yeah. it was a, a big talk of the town. Two. No, it's, it's coming soon. Uh, but yeah, reality is a big thing. We have a lot of interests from Europe uh, with reality production. And so if you like that genre, you're going to see a lot more of it. What challenges and developments do you see in the film industry in Dubai? Well, as I was saying, because it's so young, we have certain things that just aren't in place that you find in other more mature markets. So, you know, uh, other even our neighbors, you look at Egypt, you look at Jordan, uh, Morocco, they have a much more mature, long-standing film industry. They've been doing it for decades and decades and decades. Uh, you know, realistically, the country's very young, but I would say 
80s is when we really started to see production take off here uh, in the UAE. Um, so that means that certain things aren't in place that you might find, like um, incentive schemes, financing schemes. Uh, a lot of people struggle to get money to produce. There's a lot of great talent, great ideas. But if I, let's say, I have a great idea, a script, and I want to go and sell it to someone, there's not really one place you can go to pitch your idea yet. And so that's something I think we really need. Well, on that note, because as you said, a lot of the films like filmed in Dubai, they're Western people, they bring their Western actors, they bring their Western production teams here, for example, or Bollywood, as you said. Are we seeing some growth in any way, or do you think it's still something we really need to work on? So there's definitely growth in the sort of the, what we call the quote unquote below the line of crew, right? People yeah. who are uh, cinematographers and people who do the lighting and even producers, I would say. You know, we have more and more of those people who have called Dubai home, uh, which is fantastic. And I keep telling people whenever people, we have uh, visiting delegations come from other countries over at Expo X, we had a lot of different countries from all over the world express interest in Dubai and you know, what would be like to produce here. And I always tell them, I can guarantee you that you don't need to bring a crew in from outside. We have the crew here, we have the talent here, they worked on major productions. You can produce whatever you want here. Uh, where we're lagging behind a little bit is in sort of the creative side, the writers, uh, the people who are coming up with the stories. And again, it's not that they're not here, it's uh, just difficult for them to take that idea and then find the money to put it into practice. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the gap I would see, I would say. Um, something though I do hope we see more and more of and I do think that's changing. I do think there's a slow shift towards uh, getting more of our homegrown stories. We have 200 plus nationalities here. Like there's a lot of stories to tell. For aspiring filmmakers, what kind of advice would you give them? What opportunities can they take advantage of here? For aspiring filmmakers, I mean, it's tough because there's not a traditional track, you know, um, the way there are some other industries. Um, I would say kind of, I don't have a traditional career path, but I think that's kind of what you have to do now. I think take every opportunity you can find, whatever it is, to be creative. Uh, and that includes sort of creating your own opportunities. Obviously, there's a, you can create short form content or longer form content for um, you know, social and digital media. Uh, that does help. It is harder now to get yourself noticed. There was a period maybe five, 10 years ago where it was much easier if you were on YouTube, you could really make a, you know, a career or a following out of it. It's much harder, but that still helps. It still helps you create your own brand. Uh, the most important thing is just to keep creating things, even if you don't have an immediate outlet. Because once the opportunity comes, you will then have all this, uh, these scripts or ideas or things to pitch uh, that will enable you to really you know, take advantage of it. Um, and also just to keep the passion going. Like if you're not always writing or thinking of things that you want to say or do or create, then um, you're probably not going to have, or not gonna, I don't wanna say you're not gonna make it, but you need to have that passion because it's not easy. Thanks, Omar, for your perspective. We're going to continue getting your input throughout the show, so stay right there. Now, after the break, we're going to talk to an Emirati filmmaker who started her own horror-focused production company in the region. Plus, we meet an acting coach from the Higher College of Technology. So don't you go anywhere. <laughs> 